Plumbing the depth. What is it? Why do we do it? And how do we do it? What is it? Well, it's basically finding the depth of the water in front of you that you're fishing. Why do we do it? Well, picture this. Imagine we're watching a wildlife documentary with someone like David Attenborough, and he's gazing out across an African plain. The animals aren't spread evenly across those plains. They are concentrated in areas, particular features, and those features provide typically shelter, food, and water. As we look out across our lake, it's the same scenario. The fish aren't spread everywhere. They will be concentrated around particular spots and different species will be at different points in the water. So plumbing the depth will reveal the underwater shape of the lake, which is really important for us when we're actually trying to target specific fish. How do we do it? Well, it's simple. There's a tool called a plummet. And when you get set up at the start of your session, take five or 10 minutes to do this. As you get used to it, you can do it very quickly, but give yourself five or 10 minutes to get this right. Set up your float as you would do normally, but fix either a couple of float rubbers or a couple of small shot around the bottom of the float, but not enough to cock the float properly. What you're then gonna do is fix the plummet on your hook at the end of the line so it's locked in place. The plummet will sink the float and what we're going to do is set the depth initially, the distance between the float and the plummet at around two feet. Now I'm on a typical small water here and I'm going to test the depth of the margins and I'm going to do that simply by lowering the plummet into the water and I'm going to look for the float. Now the float here has disappeared. It means that the water is deeper than the two feet that I've set between the plummet and the float. So, to find out just how deep it is, I'm going to increase the distance of the float to the plummet. We'll add another 12 inches on. And we'll check again. Now I can see the float, but actually it's still below the water, so I still haven't got the depth quite right. Let's have a look again. Move that float one more time. And now the float is just sticking out of the water. So I know at that point in front of me that the depth between, well, the depth of the water is exactly the distance that I've got between my float and the plummet as it is now. So now I can take off the plummet, add the right amount of shot for that float, stick a bait on, and if I cast it exactly there, I know the bait will be just touching the bottom. Now that's perfect for fish like bream, tench, carp, those bottom feeding fish. But what about further out? Does it get any deeper? Well, if I swing the plummet and the float further out into the lake, the float's disappeared again. So I now know that the lake is sloping away and gradually gets deeper as it goes out towards the middle of the lake. So if I cast out further, my bait would no longer be on the bottom and actually those bottom feeding fish would be actually just swimming right under my bait and I'd be unlikely to get any bites at all. It doesn't take long to do, but it really is simple and it's worthwhile. So at the start of the session, remember to plumb the depth accurately out in front of you, to the right, to the left, and see what the shape of the lake looks like. The sorts of features that you're looking for are rapid changes in depth. So imagine the marginal slope, it's gonna gradually slide away, and perhaps one or two rod lengths out from the bank, it's gonna plateau. Now all the natural food and all the bait that falls in the water will roll down that slope, and then when it plateaus, that point there at the bottom of the marginal shelf, that's where we're going to see all the, all the bait collecting, and that's a really good spot to start fishing. Best of luck.